Hello and welcome. All the women and all the men <laughs> and everyone in between. I'm Levi with Northwest Magic. And I'm Howie, also with Northwest Magic. We're talking about Commander Masters. It's the hot topic right now. Uh, what cards are mistakes? What cards do we love to see? And overall, just like our thoughts on Commander Masters. So, Howie, let's uh, jump off this <laughs> bridge of knowledge. <laughs> I don't know what's gotten into me. What do you got for me? So I want to talk about some of the best reprints, or at least we'll talk about whatever. So my favorite, two of my favorite reprints right off the bat are Kozilek, The Great Distortion, and Ulamog, The Ceaseless Hunger. Are you mm. familiar with these cards? Mostly. These are the two... Uh, but for anyone not, who not needs new. to see it... Anyone yeah. who needs to see it, they'll be on the screen right I now. totally they're know the cards. I my My knowledge is unquestioned. You show them for those people, for viewers. You so tell them. <laughs> These are, they're not new anymore, but they came out in 2016 or 17. Yeah. 18-ish. And they have never been reprinted since then, except for maybe in the list, which I don't really feel counts. Or maybe, um, I believe Ulamog got the... The cereal secret layer and cereal box one recently. Ulamog then, did get the cereal. <laughs> but at the same time, like, I would never play with the cereal cards. They're cool, but, like, that's, that, that's not for me. So I think that those are spectacular reprints. Kozilek wasn't terribly expensive, but I want to say Ulamog was sitting at 30 to $60. I don't know how much it dropped after that secret layer, but that was a much-needed reprint because people love the Eldrazi Titans. I do, too. I used to have a... Animar deck that was basically just big Eldrazi Ooh. stuff. And that was that was really cool. I don't have that anymore. I've always thought about rebuilding it, but Eldrazi dump truck. Yeah. I love it. That's basically it awesome. what the deck is. Eldrazi dump. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, Animar became an infinitely large per protection from white and protection from black creature. <laughs> Scary <laughs> times. And he's got his army behind him. Of and colorless ones. Notably, the new, uh, not new, cause like the Great Distortion is in the main set and comes with the Eldrazi precon. Uh, one that I thought wouldn't get reprinted, at least for another while, I thought Grand Abolisher was destined oh, to remain expensive. Such a good reprint, because that card was. I can't remember how much it was, but I know before this it was probably like $50. It's which is crazy. Expensive. My friend who got me into Magic had this card in his main deck at the time when I was first playing Commander and it was like it wasn't a new card by any means, but it was, I want to say it was like 4 bucks, and I was like oh, that's pretty cool. I don't really want one though. <laughs> and then a few years later I was like, I wonder if how much Green Abolisher is that? I kind of want one for this new deck I'm building and it was like 50 bucks, and I was like... <laughs> Like, it makes sense because it's so mana efficient, it's cost efficient, it's really, it is a powerful card for what it what it is, and this was definitely a much needed reprint, and I don't know if you've seen the, um, the new art it has for, um, it's number 625 on Commander Masters, it's pretty cool. Mm. It's pretty cool. We'll throw it up there, look at all of it in its glory. He's, yeah, he's I, grand I abolishing right now. Grandly. Yeah. He's really cool. Now, I want to talk about this cycle that, for the most part, it's the first time it's been reprinted. The uh, If you control a commander, you may cast this spell without paying its mana cost. Is there a cycle. word for this? Like a I don't free know. commander? Not, not an official word. It's cards. like the, the, the free. They're all instants, I think. Yeah, they're all instants, so the instant free commander cycle, if you control your command, whatever. <laughs> you know, whatever you want, Levi, but <laughs> none of these have been reprinted except I'll for call Flawless it Maneuver. Dumb. Flawless Maneuver got reprinted in one of the All Will Be One precons, which was cool. Truth. And this is something that I think is an awesome reprint because there needs to be more of them in the in the world. In, in, in a sense, there needs to be more of them in the world, and they're at the rare slot, which I'm glad they didn't get upshifted to Mythic or whatever, 
because they were only reprinted in the 2020 Ikoria precons. Uh, these cards are Flawless Maneuver, Deflecting Swat, Fierce Guardianship, Obscuring Haze, and Deadly Rollick, which are, they're all... Sorry, sorry about the green one, but the green one's not <laughs> entirely green as powerful as the other yeah, ones. Yeah, green one's not like it's crazy. it's good because it's free, but the other it's four are, combat damage. are are all really powerful cards. If it was like all it's, damage, I'd actually think that card would be a little better. But. Oh yeah, if it wasn't just uh, combat damage, but being able to tap out and cast your commander, and then three of these cards are protection spells. Flawless Mover gives all your stuff indestructible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for all your creatures anyway. Deflecting Swat can change the target of a of a spell, and then Fierce Guardianship counters a non-creature spell. Those are all insane at zero mana. Um, these are amazing reprints because, like I said, more people need them. But at the same time, I do want to put this as one of my mistakes. And maybe it's a little too late and it shouldn't be in the Commander Masters video, maybe just when they were printed, because these are <laughs> very powerful. Like, oh. They're ridiculous. If if you are playing, sitting down with a group of people that you don't ever play with, which I don't ever do, I pretty much always know the people I'm playing with, but if you sit down with a group that you're not familiar with and everyone thinks you're playing a little bit more on the casual side and you... You drop a fierce guardianship it's, <laughs> it's it's a little bit of a feel bad and i don't know that just is what it is i think that is it is good to have more of these out in the world so people can get them and i love that they're printed at rare versus mythic but yeah having them more accessible to people to help out this casual format's gonna uh, just be healthier for the game overall because they're already in the format you might as well just exist, make them which was which was the mistake yeah. Yeah, that's where it all, it all started from the beginning. <laughs> but now that they're out and they're available, more available to everybody, that's it is better that way unless they were to get banned. But they're not banned worthy cards. Yeah, no, nah, there's they're, already they're, float, they're floating that line where there's no way I would stuff. ever consider these ban worthy. But they probably should not have been printed to start with. Yeah, they things all costing also got, zero mana is rough. Yeah, they also game. all got um, new art, which is really cool. The deflecting SWAT has Corvold on it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, Corvold's just like vibing out. He's like, oh. Want to see more of that sick <laughs> Corvold art? He's like smacking his smacking it away, like really casually too. He's like, ah, I can't be bothered by this hyper energy beam coming at me. I don't care about it. <laughs> yeah. So with those, those are definitely mistakes. I Honestly, a lot of people probably thought about it, looked at it, and been like, yep, that is. Uh, you know, they they threw in a lot of staples in here. What Which I love, uh, there, there's Felwar Stone in this. Felwar Stone being one of the best mana rocks at all, period. Love Felwar Stone. I may be entirely wrong when I say this. Is Felwar Stone in the set? You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I think this may be the first time it's ever been in a non precon. Therefore, it's the first time it's available in foil, which is notable. That is very notable. Yeah. That's something that a lot of people don't think about that some cards have never been printed in foil or non foil, even. Um, like they only come yeah. in foil. Yeah, I think Yuriko is another example. Yuriko is, the, like, has a etched version now which never had yeah. you never yeah. so that's pretty cool uh avison angel of hope was one that i saw which i bought when it was way too expensive uh, a, a good, while back reprint. i don't even didn't use it <laughs> i used it once and i was like didn't remember when i was really obsessed with the i had like this polymorph deck i really wanted to make work for kai car oh. it, was it wasn't working and i yeah. threw Av avison in there it's uh, a one -trick and i'm gonna be real it really didn't help me at all because indestructible a lot of other channels have talked about this indestructible is not what it used to be it is not no there's a lot of exile removal. effects and bounce and like yeah. toxic deluge is like one of the most played board wipes in the format i believe and that gets around mm -hmm. too cyclonic she's, rift she's a good card i don't think she's bad but she's not great. 50 dollars or whatever she was i think she was like 50 or 60 
before this I'm, reprint. It was What ugly. I'm looking at right now is that even right now, granted Commander Masters is not out yet and pre-order prices are typically very inflated, but she's $47.80 to pre-order right now. Still. From, from what I'm looking at. I still don't and think she's that good. She's not $40 card good. She's good, I th but not $40 card good. She got reprinted. I thought it was more recently, but it was in Double Masters, the one from 2020. So it has been yeah. three years at this point. But she, she still. has a really good reprint. It's... I mean, I'm in the boat where I think things need to be reprinted until they're cheap. But the way cards fluctuate, that's not and it's not feasible. There's definitely some cards that are just simply not worth it, and they just get driven up by simply not getting reprinted. Not even because they're necessarily super good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dark Sea Mutation is a cool one to see. Uh, I haven't yeah. seen Dark Sea Mutation. I've only seen it used like a couple times, but I know it's still. It's still a solid card, like... It's solid. I feel like that is a card where it's borderline... I wouldn't say unplayable. It's totally playable, but, like, it's getting... It's getting overshadowed by all the better yeah, instants. Yeah, I was gonna say phases out by things, like... Well, because it's not an instant, it's just an enchantment. Exactly. But there's, um... But, like, if, why play that if you can play something at instant speed, is what I'm saying. It's yeah, like, it's not the same color, too, but, um... Kenrith's transformation from... Fairy... Tale yeah. set Eld Eldrain. It does a very similar thing, Fairy except tale. it gives you a card. It replaces itself. Yeah, and that's really good. Like Darcy Mutation, it, you don't get a card back. Oh, Song of the Dryads also, I believe, got reprinted. It did. It did. And that's, and that's a that's, that's a big a, hit. People even a little like that. better because it's hard to get rid of your own lands. Yeah. So Darcy that Mutation kind of makes can, like, sense. You can like path your own commander to get it back or something or sacrifice it or whatever but getting yeah. rid of you'll need like your a own chaos war. forest you'll need a yeah it it, it is still entirely it. possible these days because you have those kind of cards generous gift um assassin's trophy now yeah a bit harder though just a little but bit harder it, it is harder just a little bit harder um yeah. grave pact is a good reprint yeah grave pact I hate to see this card because whenever you see it, it's not it's not nice. <laughs> Levi. Yeah, but it is a very powerful card. My computer won't click on it and tell me how much it costs, but it is definitely was a needed reprint. Um, I'm seeing it for uh, in the like twenty one ninety nine. But twenty one hundred bucks. bucks. So, one, so definitely old needed one, it. Old, old one, old oh, okay. One. It still needed it. Twenty bucks is too much, even though it is very powerful. I don't know if you know saw any of the other precon reprints, but we did get Spark Double in the, I believe it's in the Planeswalker precon. Yeah. Which which is a good one because I believe that also has never been reprinted since War of the Spark. And what's interesting is that was actually not as expensive as a card initially as I thought it was. Like I'm seeing lists for five no. something bucks, which yeah. I don't I know. I believe what it was, was creeping I... up to ten, fifteen. Yeah, which it was. I, that, we could still cut that out. People do need. People are on a budget. Yeah, yeah. So still really good. I love Spark Double. It's still one of my more favorite ones. You can pretty much always double your commander effects with that card. So. <laughs> And having two of your commander effects is better than one. That's what Levi always says. You can quote me right there, everyone. I believe I believe I've gone on record and said my favorite words in magic are and then do it again. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I still believe that to this day. Speaking of, you did get the new precon, or you have it pre-ordered, the Yes. Eldrazi Un. Bound, I believe it's called. The, the yeah, first, Eldrazi the Underwear first or something, whatever it's called. Ever <laughs> colorless precon in Magic, not just Commander, but I believe in Magic history. I think so too. I don't know I don't if that's true there's... because I haven't been around for all of Magic's history. At least <laughs> as a Commander, for sure. Which is that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Now we have every every color combination as a precon, I believe. Urza Lord of High Artificer is getting reprinted again. He's been reprinted several times and he's still kind of up there. But I am excited to see him go I think down. he's like $12 now after this, which is 
which is good because good. when he first came out in Modern Horizons 1, I believe he was 60 to $80, I believe. So yeah. reprinted to the ground until it's worth nothing. Oh, Bastion of Remembrance is in this one. I just learned that just now. I think that's cool. I like is that. that the, it's the when is, is it that enters, the aristocrat enchantment? Yeah, create a one yeah. one white human, and then whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and gain one life. It's it's just an enchantment version of a uh, yeah. vampire. <laughs> but it's good. The vampire my, chick guy. My favorite Blurbs. card in existence is getting reprinted here, which for the first meaningful time since its debut in twenty. 12, 13, Wait, 14 let me guess. Let me guess. I, you've probably you know told it. me a million times, but I'm forgetting. I have. On, on camera, off camera. <laughs> it's in our decks. It's in a, a lot of my decks. Fists of Flame. <laughs> I cannot believe you. <laughs> I cannot believe you're a real human being. Tell us. Tell us what it is. Perforos, God of the Forge. Perforos! Also... He deserves a guitar riff. I'll give him a guitar riff in post. <laughs> <laughs> he does, okay. does he not? He's sick. Yeah, no, he's pretty sick. Also, yeah. the first time he's ever been reprinted with a the modern border with the uh, legendary frame, all that kind of good stuff, which I love because I'm not... I don't really like the old border. Yeah. But that's just me. I like how clean it looks these days. I know a lot of people don't like the clean look and they like the old magic scrolly looking style and that's fine that's for them but then they can go buy the old one if they want <laughs> exactly and what the new is what i always say <clears throat> go ahead quote Finale me. of devastation <laughs> it's a really good reprint oh yeah and i was watching some uh open people opening lots of the pack and that's been getting i don't know i feel like i've been seeing that card get pulled quite a lot so i think it's at a higher level yeah. Uh, reprint. It's, I get. I won't, it I'm is trying to say it, but it's a very versatile card, and it. I like that it works early, but it ends games when you play it late, and that's super important. Mm -hmm. A versatile card. Yeah, pretty. Because you hate to see, you hate to see your game ender in your opening hand, and it just sits there for however many turns it takes you to win or lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's a good one. Stormkiln artist. A relatively really expensive common, uh, mostly because it's really good. Uncommon. Uh, yeah, I think I said common, huh? Uncommon. A relatively expensive uncommon. But pretty darn, gosh dang it, pretty solid card. <laughs> uh, originally printed in the Commander's Legends, right? Was it Legends? Strixhaven. It was Strixhaven. Are we talking about Stormkiln Artists? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Strixhaven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Magecraft. Duh. Magecraft. It has Magecraft. Come on. Magecraft. Come on. Come on, Levi. Come on, the Harry, the Harry Potter place. <laughs> uh, yeah. Super great. Uncommon. Uh, it there are it some goes good... in any Spellslinger deck with red. Yeah. There's some good downshifts in here. I couldn't name a lot of them for you, but there's a lot of stuff that was mythic and now it's rare, or was rare and now it's uncommon. But those are around, I believe, on the front page of Scryfall. At least it did when we recorded this video. You, there was a link that showed you the downshifted stuff. Something that I think is super cool. Have you ever seen Zalortha Strength in Oh No, I haven't, Howie. Why is that? Because it ne it's never gotten an actual reprint or an actual print, I mean. Th that's right. Oh, you <laughs> did know. This is yeah. the first time this card has been printed as Zalortha Strength Incarnate in paper. Um... It does exist as a Godzilla version of the card, where it says like Zalortha under the title, like this this is what it would be if it was a magic card. And they finally did it. It's not a very exciting card. 7-3 Trample. Lethal damage dealt to creatures you control is determined by their power rather than their toughness. I guess it's like, it, it is a 5 mana 7-7 seven, seven with Trample, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But it's a little novel. But it's fun and it's that's cool. Yeah. I think that's the only card that's ever been like that where it had the magic name first and then didn't give it to us for Yeah, I think so three too. years. It's been three years, because that was an Ikoria thing. Mm-hmm. That is a that is a crazy thing to happen. 
Yeah. Heroic Intervention, The Great Henge, two amazing Those are green really good cards. Cards. Oh. And the Great Henge is a lot of money. I want to say that card was also 80 bucks. It is. It got a reprint, sort of. I mean, it did. It, it was like a box topper, right? It was Lord a box topper, yeah. Yeah, that probably didn't affect didn't. the price much. Especially because it kind of goes by its own name anyway. Yeah. But this is getting a proper reprint and a proper set. Heroic Intervention, I think, definitely needed to go down. That card is was criminally overpriced for a long time. Yeah. It's been reprinted so several times since its original printing in Aether Revolt or whatever, but every time it creeps back up. But it's it's a super solid it's card. It's amazing. Anytime super, you super use a card. creature heavy deck with green, you you kind of have to. It's put it all in your there. permanents. It's not just your creatures, bro. It's true. True. It's, it's pretty much lands. just anything it's with your green. enchantments. <laughs> anything it's, with green. It's, in it. Just put it in. It's there. one of it's it's in 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 a sense it's one of green's best counter spells. It basically is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to see Silvala, Heart of the Wilds, reprinted. I think that's a pretty solid. All the card. medallions. Ooh, all the medallions. Jet Except the green Pearl. one. No one cares about the green one. <laughs> I think the green one's still good. People <laughs> no, don't is. play it because of other green stuff, but Emerald Medallion, Pearl, Jet, Ruby and Sapphire Medallion. I love Ruby and Sapphire Medallion because of Galazeth Prismari, one of my favorite. Oh, characters. yeah. Those because then it's a two so mana well. tapping mana rock that also makes everything cheaper. It's, it's so good. That is that is nasty. That's cheating. You're cheating when you play that. <laughs> I'm just a value machine, Levi. <laughs> yeah, you are. No, that that is so delicious. That's what I'll call it. There's not a it's lot a delicious of card. very interesting land reprints. You do have five of oh. the um, Battle Bond. Those are nice to see again. Battle Bond lands. Those uh, are really nice to see again. They unless you have two or more opponents, which is oh. most of the game unless you draw it and there's only it's a 1v1. One, one opponent left. Yeah, which oh, that kind of sucks, but I've almost never had that happen to me. I know that I've heard a lot of people like dunk on these these profile cards. Have you seen them? They're kind of weird. I won't lie. I think Ulamog is kind of hilarious. I like the non-human looking ones because like you look at like uh, Salvala and Azusa and uh, Tasa Karlov and Yuriko and I can they're iconic characters. Yeah. I can tell who they are by looking at the art, but it's just like, it's just a, they're just people. It's just like a side profile. <laughs> they're, yeah, yeah, they're it's just, just like, uh. <laughs> I like Kai Car. He's just a goose. He's just a That's goose. That's cool. I That's believe. cool. I have I like a... Omnath. I like the non-people ones. I think the Neheb, who is also a very good reprint, looks awesome. Oh, yeah. That Super one's pretty cool. solid. It kind of reminds me of like that kind of pop art uh, that you'd see in a in a hipster's apartment. Yeah. I don't know, like that colorful pop art that you'd see. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Ashton's so think... altar at yeah, uncommon. At mm -hmm. uncommon. I believe Ashton's altar has always been an uncommon card. It doesn't feel that way. That's for it sure. does not because it really it's so doesn't. powerful. But I'm pretty sure it always has been uncommon. I think the last expensive. time it got reprinted was Eternal Eternal Masters or something. And have you even heard of that set before? <laughs> nope. Eternal I don't Masters know what is that from. Is. I think it's no, before I, I was know. playing, so like 2016 or something. It's one of the old master sets. Uh, um, yeah, what do you think about the commander decks? I think they're all pretty cool. They actually have a decent amount of value to them, more than pretty much a lot of the other ones have. I think the Planeswalker one's pretty solid. I, I watched a game of some folks kind of using all of them. The Colorless one was kind of popping off. The Slivers one was actually performing the worst. And the Planeswalker one was actually doing pretty well. The, enchant the Enchantment one was... Uh, just ramping super hard and being a pretty good threat. Honestly, they, they all, all seemed pretty powerful. They seem solid out of the box, but I do not agree with the price point. Yeah, it $80. Is not, it is not good. 
like finding it for the cheapest I could was 80 bucks. Some of and them, I believe like, this, I believe the Eldrazi one, this was before all the cards were shown, but I think it went up to 150 at some places, it, maybe 120. Oh, yeah, it did, which was super silly. I was able to snag mine for 80, but that I, I, it, I can't justify 120 for a commitment. I also that. believe a lot. I also think that they might not be as good value as they look right now because if you look on a, a website like uh, MTG Goldfish, they um, all the new cards are like thirty bucks each, and that makes it look like they're getting a lot <laughs> yeah. more value. But they're not even out yet, and there's no way there's no way you can tell me that Zula Doc Void Gorger. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had to read his name. I didn't want to butcher it. I didn't want to void gorge it. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's no way that the face commander for a precon is going to be, he's sitting at like 30 bucks right now. Yeah. That's insane. He's, he's that is go insane. Down. No, if there's, I don't know how many precons they print in the world, but if let's say, let's say it's like 50,000, that's probably a low number, but like if there's 50,000 in the world, he's not going to be worth 30 bucks. It's a piece of cardboard. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. He'd have to be pretty gosh darn good. Yeah. And I like Zula, Zula Doc, <laughs> Void Gorger, but I also don't think that he's face commander material. I think he's great. Yeah, in no, he's I don't like that he doesn't do anything by himself. Like he he seems like he would be great. Like like I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you remember, mm. Kozilek is in the precon and he's. The yeah, most popular is. colorless commander, and for a good reason. I've seen him play. Like, you just ramp, and then you refill your hand, and then you counter everything, and you win. Because you have a 12-12 menace commander. <laughs> That's two hits, and you're dead. Yeah, it, it seems really nasty. I think one of the best things to come from this set at all is the colorless support that they added to it. Because it really needed it. There are some really good colorless new colorless spells mm -hmm. in here skittering cicada gives everything flash which is really cool uh new board wipe with uh calamity of the titans you gotta reveal a colorless creature card from your hand but they're all big mm -hmm. and the size of it is how much you exile the new the other there's only two new eldrazi's the other new eldrazi flayer of loyalties it's pretty cool it's a 10 mana 10 10 when you cast it you gain control of target creature until end of turn untap that creature until end of turn it has base power and toughness 10 10 and gains trample annihilator 2 and haste and it has trample and annihilator 2 notably a cool thing you can do with that is you don't have to pick an opponent's thing like if you if you want to need one of your things to get through for damage you can make your own thing at 10 10 with trample annihilator 2 and haste what they added was great a lot of the reprints were great. Uh, it's just the price. The price for this set is just way too high. It is. And I think that it is going to be a set where... This has been happening a lot recently. In, like over the past three to five years, I believe. Where sets are expensive when they come out. And then if you wait like for two more sets to come out. You can go back and get things for way cheaper not everything like i'm sure like the fierce guardian ships and stuff will go back up but like some of it won't if you look back even like the what was the chase rare from all will be one uh elish nor and mother mm -hmm. of machines yeah how much was that how much was that card when it came out oh it was like or for pre-order i think wasn't it like 60 it was like 60 -ish, yeah it's 25 dollars now and that's the best card <laughs> in the set hands down yeah it's just and that card that card's from when it was all will be one that was november last year december maybe it's probably november so it's not terribly old yet nine months and it's it's gone down yeah but. very very sussy wussy but one of my first decks was this a sliver deck. It was Sliver Overlord, which I changed to Legion, which I changed to the first Sliver. Now <laughs> Grave Mother's out, and I kind of, I kind of want to fill that itch again. I kind of want to build it. We did a a deck tech, put it on the screen somewhere. <laughs> It'll I'm be up here. <laughs> That's it's a fun one. Also, <laughs> something that was cool. I did not take advantage of this at all when I made the deck because I didn't think about it. 
but there are slivers with enter the battlefield triggers and um like harmonic sliver i think harmonic sliver might be in the deck tech I, we did but i didn't mention this part when you encore it all the encore things will uh tokens will see each other so like encore sliver i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> encore uh, sliver. Har harmonic sliver when he's encore <laughs> all three of them will see each of them enter so you destroy nine enchantments like for three mana Ooh. I think it's artifacts and enchantments, but like the enter the battlefield stuff, I that's should have leaned usually, into a little more. That's like everybody's stuff. Yeah, you might hit your own stuff too, because I don't believe it's a May. <laughs> ah. But it's still pretty cool. That's okay. Oh, yeah, in turn. Is there, is there anything that you wish was reprinted that was not reprinted here? Because I have one or two that I yeah. was sad to not see. Uh, why don't you go ahead? I wanted an Esper Sentinel reprint. White needs the card draw, oh, and yeah. Esper Sentinel goes in a many decks. When did that card come out? Modern Horizons two. Yeah, we Which, still have yet to see When it was again. Modern Horizons two? I'm probably gonna misremember this, but I believe it was 2021. I want to say two, it was yeah. Two years ago. I think that's long enough to have a very powerful stapley card like Esper Sentinel C a reprint. You're absolutely right. Why? Even more modern cards like I think Shieldred the Apocalypse could have been in here because I believe that card is still sitting at $80 and rising. <laughs> what the heck, man? That's and ridiculous. That card, that card is six months old, but if that would have saw a reprint here, nobody would have complained. Uh, I would have, maybe just in general, I mean, we do have a lot of, oh, we even have the talismans. I was even going to say, like, I want to see the talismans. We got the talismans. Yeah. We got a lot of the one. I don't have, like, a ton of complaints, really. I mean, I, my main format is Commander. They even put Crater Hoof Behemoth, too. They I got it all. I didn't know that Behemoth was in here. Yeah, Crater Hoof's also in there. It's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, that's mostly all I had to say about the set. There are some cards that I wish didn't exist, and there, are the precons yeah. should have been forty dollars, like any of the any of the other precons. There's no reason why these needed to be double or triple or even quadruple that much money. Exactly. That's way too much. No, it is. It's too much, but I'm happy. What is in this set is in the set. I wouldn't take anything out. So, yeah, well, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, are you happy with it, Howie? Overall, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's been I feel a, like a lot of the juice. I, I don't buy booster packs, but I do feel like this is not a set I would buy booster packs from if I were to because... There are a lot of rares that do not look like they would be good hits for the money. But th but it's a big swing because there's you got Jeweled Lotus in here. One of the most expensive cards that is not reserve list that is out there. Mm -hmm. But either way, it's it's totally a good set. I would say it's good. It's not great. It's not bad. It's, it's oh, a good set. they should have printed wastes in this set. That's what they should have done. There are 15 wastes in the precon. That's it. No, That's I want. It. I want in. The I don't think set. it's in the main set. I want though, in right? the main set. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe so. I might be wrong, but I don't believe so. I don't believe that there's. It's kind of surprising because there are not a lot of um. There are six colorless cards in the main set, I believe, that are like creatures. Yeah. And one of them is Kozilek, which needs the colorless mana. I don't yeah. think there's too much colorless going on mana producing wise, so they, they did need that. But I don't know, it seems it seems like they just Wizards just is like, ah, we've got all these other different lands that generate colorless, who cares? It's probably yeah. why they justified the fifteen wastes in the yeah, Fifteen is a good number though. You get enough basic lands to Wayfarer's bobble to find with. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, that's those are my thoughts. Any last any final thoughts on this subject, Howie? 
hit the subscribe button. Yes. Thanks and see ya. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, sub to the Patreon. Uh, Howie will show you his chest if you sub to this Patreon. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>